My today's guest, Alexandra Bogatoyo, is a recruitment consultant at People Partners. Her colleagues call her a chief positive vibes officer, and if you listen to this interview, you can tell why. While most of our episodes are for entrepreneurs and business owners, this time we are coming with a bunch of tips for people who have to look for a new job. Alexandra will share what are the important things to mention in your CV or how to approach a remote video interviews. Here's my conversation with Alexandra Bogatoyo. So Alexandra, let's start with uh, on a positive note. What are the roles you recently filled? Well, um, it's kind of clear <laughs> that the market is changing uh, or at least adapting to the current situation. Um, so it, it has been a few months that were um, full of uncertainties, so to say, but obviously now things are kind of uh, getting more easier, so to say. So roles have been very diverse just because also the area that I'm taking care of um, has a lot of uh, coverage, right? So from digital marketing to e-commerce platforms, but on the other side, everything that is like client servicing. Um, so it's very diverse. Um, these are the roles that I've been filling up lately uh, in the last, yeah, actually in this month as well, everything that has to do with digital marketing, social media campaigns, SEO analytics, as well as client facing uh, roles or client servicing roles. These are the most that I've been filling up. Um, I can say that because I do receive a lot of inquiries, right, from, from different people uh, in terms of different kind of roles. So I have been taking care of before um, of roles that are within uh, finance or HR. However, from what I can see now, it's not such a high demand for that um, comparing to the other ones, right? I mean, there might be roles, uh, but I personally focus more on what's on high demand and that has to do with digital marketing. Okay, so do you see do you see this digital marketing in general to be something which is uh, now attractive for clients? Let's say after Corona, if we can consider it now after Corona or after the after the hardest lockdown and everything, uh, do you see it as well? A... Yeah, um, I don't know if we are after Corona yet. Um, I have to say that. This is what I'm noticing. We are still in the process of learning and discovering what's going to be next. How can we do things better and how can we reach further, right? In terms of uh, our businesses. Yeah. And um, well, yes, it's definitely a situation where businesses are a bit more relaxed uh, in terms of their next step. They have a more clear vision on what is it actually working um, for, for us, not only what I take care of, but also what my colleagues are looking after um, on the digital sector like everything that has to do with tech, um, it's a high demand in that side as well. So yes, I could say that if there are people uh, that started upscaling themselves and started learning you, you know, uh, new, new skills or getting experience from different areas, uh, that's something that can benefit them a lot. Um, during these three months, obviously, as you have seen in my videos, I try to kind of encourage people and all these kind of things. And with everyone that I've been talking to, I advise them, look, if you are still in a company and if you are lucky um, that you are still, have a, still having a job, just try to find a way of moving into departments that, you know, you might have wanted to work in for a long time, but you never had the chance. Um, and start from there. Um, I personally believe that it's it's the easiest way for people to kind of change careers. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, is there any particular skill maybe within the digital marketing area which you see it's now picking up or are now more clients looking for, let's say the digital marketing generalist, this all in one uh, magician it, who can cover it? Yes, <laughs> unicorns as I'm calling them. <laughs> Um, it really, really depends from company to company. Um, 
companies are always looking for unicorns, <laughs> which, which is great, right? I mean, uh, that, that's why we are here uh, to, find, to find them. Uh, it, as I mentioned, it really, really depends from company to company. There are companies that will be looking for people that are having a broad experience within digital marketing. And there are also organizations that are looking for very specific, uh, very specific skills, right? So I can't really uh, make it general that everyone is looking for the same thing because that's not true. Um, and I would, I would not want to put people in difficulties. <laughs> that's mm. for sure. But what I can tell you is that every single company is looking uh, for achievements. So, you know, achievements and uh, success stories is something that everyone want to hear in any industry. Okay. Uh, that brings us nicely to one of the topics you covered in your, in your videos. Uh, and that's uh, what to highlight in your CV and achievements or uh, how you're reaching the KPIs is one of the things which is often missing there, if I'm not mistaken. Well, yes, <laughs> unfortunately it does sometimes. I mean, um, as I'm always advising my candidates, look, I might have uh, more time than someone that's working on a company side has in terms of going and actually speaking to you and understanding what you do. But at the end of the day, we have to remember that every every single thing that a recruiter or a hiring manager sees, the first thing is your CV. So if your CV does not look appealing or attractive from this perspective, then no wonder that you are not called for an interview. Um, and there are a lot, a lot of people that are having amazing experience, amazing achievements, yet they have not mentioned it in their CV. And it's like, oh, no one is calling me. Well, because you should highlight that. I mean, you know, I understand the humbleness part, but when it's coming to a job, yes, you have to take pride in what you have achieved. You have to trust yourself, to trust your skills and bring them in front of everyone. Okay, so how to, how to practically do it? Uh, let's say I'm a, I don't know, PPC specialist or digital marketing specialist in a, in a company. Now uh, I'm looking for a new job. Uh, what should be the mm -hmm. things to highlight in the, my CV for such a position? Well, what you have achieved based on your KPIs. I mean, what I like to see in, in, in CVs um, is not only, oh, my KPIs were this, that, this, that. Um, I actually like to see what have you achieved through those KPIs, right? So if your KPI was, um, I don't know, to, to build, uh, to bring leads into the company. I would like to see how many you've done and in what time frame. or if you're, um, you know, because ultimately everything that's going around digital um, has a sense of sales, right? Every single thing um, is going back to, it's, it's not like digital is not anymore just an advertising place where it creates just brand awareness that brand awareness ultimately has to pay back the company. So what have you achieved through everything you have implemented? That's something that everyone would like to see because this is what hiring managers are asking for. Mm -hmm. So ideally present basically the effect my work had on a bottom line of a company I, I worked for. Yes, yes, you can, you can call it like that. Because some, sometimes we maybe as a marketer, sometimes we like think in our, you know, silo in our tunnel of, uh, okay, I'm managing social media. So yes, I had beautiful posts on social media, but not always we are able to like demonstrate the effect we had on the overall, on the overall business. Yes, um, that's true. And I do find a lot of people that are doing that. Um, however, when you talk to them, they will always have something to say. They will always have something to, you know, showcase you with. Uh, and that's the beauty of it. Because for me, asking them, I do get to, to understand this. And I'm like, hey, why haven't you mentioned in your CV? I mean, that's a great achievement. And, the, and always their answer is like, oh, I never thought of it. Okay. <laughs> now maybe it's the time to make some changes. <laughs> 
So would you say we, uh, candidates are underestimating themselves usually in CVs? Sometimes, yes. Sometimes, okay. yes. Okay. Any other advice regarding the CVs? Because I, uh, in my opinion, that's probably the way how I can learn an interview in the first place, right? The CV is probably the biggest factor in this. Yes, yes. Uh, clean, a clean CV. Uh, it's very, very important. And what I mean by clean is having the accurate dates as in month and year. It's very important. Um, I personally, I personally don't like CVs that are having just years. Like, I don't know, from 2018 till 2019. Well, we have 12 months in one year. So <laughs> if you can be more specific, that will really help us, right? Um, and it's not for, for the sake that I like it this way. It's just because um, hiring managers are actually looking for people that are showing stability most of the time, right? And maybe also during this particular time uh, that everyone is going through, stability is a very, very important factor that um, that hiring managers are looking for, right? So yeah, um, dates as in months and year uh, are very important. The name of the company and the job title are very important. And then obviously um, you, you can either, so you can structure your CV either um, achievements overall, or if you want to put achievements based on each and every job you have, um, you can do that as well. So you know, in both ways, it's, it's okay, but a clean CV is very, very important. So obviously, you know, um, spelling everything right <laughs> and yes. align it correctly into the page, <laughs> that will, that will really help, especially for people that are, you know, within digital marketing and copywriting, that's a very, very important thing because at the end of the day, if you have that, that clean way of, uh, presenting your CV, that means that you are very serious about your job and uh, you do things properly as well. Yeah, I think from my experience with hiring, it shows certain level of, let's say, maybe responsibility of how the person mm. achieve it. If someone sends you just like, you know, full page of text and uh, it's not formatted at all or is the basic formatting from Microsoft Word, uh, it doesn't really yeah. show that a person cares about how things are presented, which probably in marketing we should have. Yes, that's for sure. I totally agree with you on that. Okay. Uh, anything uh, which uh, you see actually changed in the uh, interview process uh, nowadays? I guess uh, we don't have uh, in-person interviews now. Is it the biggest change for yes. you? Yes, uh, it is. It is. Uh, I mean, as we are doing this podcast as well, right? <laughs> I'm a big fan, as I said, I'm a big fan of face-to-face -face interaction. Uh, because for me, it's not a matter of, uh, it's not a matter only of um, skill sets or experience that someone has. I strongly believe, and I've been seeing that there is a specific um, personality that a company has, and therefore the candidates need to be adaptable to that particular personality that the entire organization have. Right. So. This is something that um, I was always focusing on. Like even with organizations, I was always uh, saying that, look, I need to have a meeting with you and see your company and see the team and see the organization for me to be able to, you know, to put you in touch with the best candidates. Because at the end of the day, that's something that's going to be a long lasting relationship. So neither my clients or I want anything uh, that someone will join a company and then in three, four months down the line, they'll be like, oh, it's not the right person or it ha doesn't have the right personality uh, because, you know, it's not sustainable. So yeah. th this might, might have created, uh, I won't say a difficulty because Zoom calls and video calls um, are always, always useful. And if you have like a sixth sense for people, <laughs> that won't be difficult at all. Mm -hmm. okay. So maybe this is what changed. 
What should then uh, candidates consider when they're preparing for the remote interview? Because it's a little bit different. Maybe I'm not able to sell myself that well. I'm not able to make such a good impression over over Zoom or over VC. Uh, what should I consider if I'm going for a remote interview like this? Well, first of all, to to take out of your mind the fact that it's just a video interview and to act and to put yourself in that mindset where it's still an interview, right? Um, I have seen cases where people have been rejected because they did not take serious um, these interviews and they acted kind of, their attitude was a little bit laid back and I understand. I mean, I currently work from the office, but I have been working for three months from home and I've been hearing a lot of people that, you know, I mean, they were saying, oh, p pajamas demand uh, has increased because people are working from home. <laughs> Yet for me it was like, uh, why? I mean, you know, if, if you're going for an interview, be formal and have the same attitude as you'll be having in a face-to-face -face interview, because ultimately this will be impacting your interview um, feedback, right? So this is something that I have noticed people w weren't taking it very serious. Um, but either than that, obviously the, the hiring process is sl slower in this way, right? Mm -hmm. So also from, from the company side, the process is a little bit slower. Um, but yeah, eventually it does work well. During my career, when I was hiring someone remotely, there was uh, always been like big, big difference in attitude from different people, right? As you said, someone would almost come in their pajamas and uh, do the interview from the kitchen, and someone uh, would come properly sit up, uh, prepared for the, for the interview. Uh, so there are big differences in this. And from what you're saying, I understand it actually makes an impact on the hiring managers or the hiring decisions in the end. Yes, it does. It does. I had situation where <laughs> this kind of things happen. So I know that it does because yeah, even if we work remotely, uh, we still need to be professional, right? Um, and eventually we will be going back to the office. So it's, even if it's a Zoom call, um, it's your kind of business card. So we don't have to disregard that, in my opinion. Hmm. Okay, okay, absolutely. Uh, well, one thing I heard you talking about is also attitude and energy during the interviews, which I believe like during the video, it's even bigger challenge than usual, I guess. Uh, mm. What would you say about that? What we can do with that as a, as a candidate? Trust ourselves. <laughs> Trust ourselves. Uh, yes, yes. Um, I mean, I think I think um, energy and personality is something that we kind of um, grow up with, right? And it and it's getting shaped over time, based on different different circumstances and scenarios and life experiences. Now. Um, I won't disregard the fact that yes, someone, um, you know, there are different type of people. Some people can be introverts, some people can be extroverts, and that's nothing wrong with neither of them. Um, but what I have seen in both scenarios, right? So if you really want a job, if you really believe that, yes, I do have the perfect skill sets for it, I, I do, you know, I can be the best perfect candidate for this job you can um, you can get it. So I know cases and scenarios where, you know, these people had the right attitude, obviously the right experience as well. Uh, we don't have to disregard that. Just having the right attitude doesn't really land you a job if you have no experience. So, so let's not mislead people from that perspective. But yeah. um, if, you, if you have the right experience, if you are talking, you know, if you have an initial conversation with... Uh, with the recruiter or with the HR person, uh, showing interest in the company, showing interest in the job, um, it's, it's a plus. I mean, 
you know, from my side, I do talk to people, hundreds of people on a daily basis. Um, and I do come across people that, you know, when I'm calling them and I'm like, hi, I'm calling you in regards to a job. They're like, oh yeah. So what job have I applied for? <laughs> okay. I understand. <laughs> like I understand that people do apply to a lot of jobs, right? But if you are coming with this low energy where like careless, you know, instead of being like, oh, really? Okay. Thank you so much for calling. And, you know, having, having a positive attitude that actually someone calls you for an interview for a job, regardless of what job it is or where you have applied, um, that also can backfire you, right? Because you will show that you, you actually have no interest in getting any job. So why, why would you waste your energy <laughs> if you don't want the job? Yeah. Right? So I think this is the difference that I'm seeing. I don't know. How do you see this? How is it for you? I think it's related to what you said about personality at the, at the beginning, because when I'm speaking with him, I'm interviewing someone remotely and already I feel like bad or there's no, not a good vibe uh, remotely mm. like, uh, over video, then I'm like, okay, I'm going to spend five days a week with this person in the office and already through video, <laughs> like I want to end this video now. And so what I'm going to do with the person in the office, right? Exactly. Exactly. As I said, every, every company has their own personality and personality match is as big as experience match, right? So they are both going hand in hand. And as I'm saying, there is always a type of company that suits every single type of person. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, I feel like people are sometimes, uh, especially because of those remote interviews, some people are really nervous from the, from the video. Uh, I know that's mm -hmm. not your case, but there are such people. <laughs> and... Well, <laughs> it might look like it's not my case, but it can be sometimes. <laughs> is, there, is there any advice you, you could give to uh, such people where maybe like it's first time they're having remote interviews and, you know, they're not really comfortable with the camera and everything and they, I don't know what they can do in this case. Well, just be yourself. Be yourself. It's normal to be nervous. And it's normal to feel more nervous when we have interviews. Uh, because, you know, we, we want to show that we are the best for that job. And that creates a kind of anxiety. Uh, because we will be like, oh, I really want this job. Would, would they like me? Am I going to be the best person for it? And all these kind of things, right? Um, so just be yourself. It, it's normal to be nervous. You can actually, I don't know, maybe say at the beginning that, well, I'm sorry if I'm a little bit nervous um, because everyone will understand it, right? Everyone will understand it. And the person that is in front of you will always know how to make you feel more comfortable um, and, you know, lead you into that discussion that is more at ease and you'll slowly, slowly relax. Um, that's one. And second, trust yourself. Trust yourself and your experience. Trust that the experience you are having, if you reach that far, it's actually suitable for that. Um, do a check on, on the organization. Um, you know, think that you are the best suitable candidate for that and you are a perfect match overall. And I don't know, try, try some video calls with your friends prior to that your family so you 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 feel a little bit uh comfortable in actually having the camera in front of you and interacting with someone i actually think this is the this is super important to and it's connected to the first point you said to admit that i'm nervous so okay let's practice it i will call my friend in the same setup i will have the yes. interview right and then i will try it i will make sure that the camera works i will make sure that i know how to use the zoom and everything uh because then Yes, if I'm, if I'm nervous and then first time I'm using Zoom, definitely something will break up and it will not end up well. Well, actually, it's a very important thing what you said uh, to, to, to test the video and the audio and to make sure that, you know, your laptop or computer is connected, your electricity is working, <laughs> your internet connection is working. Um, it, it's true, as it happened to us, we might have a, a small uh, breakup in between but you have to make sure that you are on time. Your, your setup is organized and you, your connections are working properly because 
here for, for hiring managers will be uh, an easier, much more easier way of understanding that you are not serious about the job uh, than it is when you are actually going for a face-to-face -face interview where they might be a little bit late or maybe, you know, the person that needs to let them know uh, about the fact that you are in the office, it's delayed a bit and all these kind of things. Um, here, you know, you have no excuse. I mean, there is no traffic. You, there wasn't any accident on the road that made you be delayed. It's you at your own comfort zone home, right? So just make sure that you are on time and everything is working perfect. Yeah, and I believe, especially if you're nervous, like being on time is the first thing which will make you a little bit more comfortable that you have everything set up. You're five minutes earlier. You can sit, breathe, drink your smoothie before an interview. And it's way better than rushing, uh, running the last minute and uh, trying to set everything up right before. That's true. That's true. You are perfect, right? <laughs> uh, Alexander, one very specific question in the end. Uh, I know you mm -hmm. work for an uh, for an airline in the past. Is is that right? And yes, I wasn't a cabin crew though. If this is I know, if I this know. is your question, I wasn't. Uh, I'm I'm getting there. Yeah, because unfortunately now in uh, in Dubai, uh, many of our friends who work as as a crew will be looking for another job, and it seems they will need to change their industry uh, because yes. crew is. Uh, not gonna be such a such a big industry anymore. What would you advise specifically to them? Right. So um, as you have seen, um, I did change careers many times, um, and that was something that you know at the, at the end of the day I reached where I wanted to be. Uh, so I'm really happy about that. Um, as you said, yes, I have been working in airlines, not as a cabin crew. However, I wanted and I applied 13 times, but <laughs> it wasn't for me. <laughs> now, <clears throat> I know that there are a lot of people out there that are in this situation. Um, I always choose to look at the positive side, right? So I have also a lot of friends um, where I used to work before that are cabin crews. And, you know, some, sometimes they, they are in, in that comfort zone that um, they will be like, oh, I'm just going to be one more year here and I will be resigning. And again, they will be falling into another year and another year and another year because they will be afraid to take that risk on, okay, what do I actually want to do? What am I good at? Where I want to build my career in, right? Um, and they're like, oh, you know, I spent so many years. No one will actually hire me or the salary won't be that great or I won't be having the traveling benefits and so on. So I completely understand that loop that's going over and over and over again. So for some of them, honestly, I believe that if they are looking into, okay, I wanted to quit many, many times before, but I couldn't, look at the positive. Now you are pushed into getting what you really want. Now, um, be as well realistic. So I have discussed with some of them uh, to be realistic in terms of what really works and what you really want to do is the best thing that you can do right now, right? I mean, look at, that, look, look at the industries that are actually working and where you can be an added value because I have encountered a lot of them that were coming with some industries that it's more than obvious that now those industries are not at their best time. <laughs> so be realistic, like be realistic, but, uh, and transferable skill sets. Honestly, they have such amazing transferable skill sets uh, because a lot of them, they have obviously different degrees in different areas. A lot of them, they have been doing a lot of courses during this time that they've been working as cabin crews. Um, I, I have encountered people that were actually doing like freelancing jobs, mm -hmm. which is amazing, right? So it's not a dead end. This is what I want to say. Um, it's something that... If you are looking at the positive side, if you are looking at what do you want to achieve in, in your life and in your career and where do you want to grow, focus on that. Focus on that. Reach out to people and reach out to people from the perspective where, hey, these are my skill sets. This is how I can be an added value to your company, right? Because uh, this is what 
matters. And here I'm talking from my own personal experience. This is how I got a lot of my jobs because I knew how to put forward my transfer skill sets and how those will be an added value to the organizations that I'm applying for. Uh, and it worked. So it can work for anyone. I think it's really important first step because as you said many many times they're kind of underestimating themselves maybe let's say because they're like yes. oh I've, I've been cabin crew for many years I've never worked in the office and uh, so now no one will hire me because of that. I don't think it's true right at the same time there are people who are for example perfect in taking care of customers or something like that. Yes yes exactly plus they have so many challenges uh, uh, in their job with so, so many things that uh, I strongly believe a lot of companies will actually benefit from that. Yeah. Absolutely. The way that they are approaching situation. Yeah, that's, uh, that's definitely true. Well, I would say uh, as, a, as a first step, guys, you know, go on LinkedIn, follow, uh, follow Alexandra there to thank get you. some boost <laughs> of positive energy. Uh, Alexandra, thank you very much for that. Not only for this interview, but for the positive vibe you're sharing with us during, uh, during these times. Thank you so, so much as well, Lucas. Thank you for reaching out. I'm more than happy to, to help anyone and kind of guide them on how the market is currently and you know, small little advices as we, we try to do in here as well. I really, really hope that this will be reaching as many people as needed and they, they will be taking in a very positive aspect and will be actually helping them because this is what we are trying to reach. I truly believe that this episode will help those of you who are now looking for a job. I hope that Alexandra's enthusiasm can help you see the light at the end of the tunnel and that the practical tips she shared can help you to land a new job. So what are you waiting for? Rewind back to those tips, edit your CV and go and reach out to companies you believe you can add value to. Because you can. And if you like this episode, follow us on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or listen to our other episodes at jai.co slash podcast. That's jayi dot co slash podcast. That will be it today. On behalf of our producer, Arshak Ismail, thank you for listening and we'll talk to you very soon.